Hello and welcome to Daily Dose Radio, a five-minute a day podcast studying the Psalms verse by verse, recorded here in the dining room of the Bible Bistro, located in Sharonville, Ohio. Hey there, friend. Welcome back to Daily Dose Radio here in the Bible Bistro. Today we're going to look at the Remembrance section, part two. Yeah, well, it really, it's, yeah, it's a part two, we'll say that, and and how this connects to with where we were at the beginning of the week. We're going to look at that because their corrupt heart still is a problem. Even though God is working away in the wilderness and in the Egypt, you know, the deliverance from the Egyptian captivity, still the hard heart, it's, it's still there. The corruption, we cannot escape Adam's corruption. It's still there. So we're going to look at all that today. Beginning here in verse 51, we're going to read 51 through 58. So let me just go ahead and read today. And smote all the firstborn of Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham, but made his own people to go forth like a sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them on safely so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. He brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them, divided them an inheritance by line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God, and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow, for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. All right, so we have the remembrance, part two here. Part one was the Egyptian signs. The blood, the flies, the caterpillar, the locust, the hail, the thunderbolts, the evil angels. And now we continue with Egyptian signs. The firstborn of Egypt killed. That's it, um, Exodus chapter 11. The chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham. You'll recall that Egypt is a part of the lineage of Ham. So Noah had three sons, Japheth, Ham, Shem. And those were the three sons of, of Noah. Ham and his lineage moved into this area, and actually one of the sons of Ham was called Egypt. And so the Tabernacles of Ham is a description, an ancient description of the Egyptians. It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 10. So look at Genesis 10, 6, and actually that whole chapter. But made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock and led them on safely so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. Exodus chapter 14. The people passed through on dry land, but then when the Egyptians tried to do that, the Lord swallowed them up in the sea. And then they rejoiced in 15, all that God had done. His salvation was near to them at that moment. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. Now, can you just imagine Asaph sitting and writing this psalm, and he's thinking about the Lord bringing them here. And so he covers quite a bit of territory of time, doesn't he? From the moment that Egypt is destroyed to the moment when uh, Jerusalem becomes part of the inheritance of Israel, when, when David takes it and it becomes the capital. Yeah, so he says, even to this mountain which his right hand had purchased. So he's thinking about the place where the temple's sitting. He's thinking about the place where the name of the Lord dwells. So brought them to the sanctuary, to the mountain, which his right hand had purchased. So he's thinking about Zion there. He cast out the heathen before them and divided an inheritance by line. That is, you know, the entire property of Palestine was divided up according to Lot. And line lines were drawn for the tribal boundaries and, and within the tribes, the families, and so forth. So all of this is divided by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. And I don't know, if I was writing this, maybe I'd stick a Selah right there. Consider this. But notice verse 56. Yet. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God. Now, doesn't that remind you of verse 36? Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. They lied unto him with their tongues. Their heart was not right with them. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God. Now in verse 41, we have, Yet they turned back and tempted God. 
Here we have, yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not his testimonies, but turned back. Here is turned back again. There in, in, uh, in verse 41, we have it here in 51 again. They turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. Israel had a problem with that. You know, the false worship plagued them from the time that they were in the desert, even with the, the Baal Peor incident and also with the golden calf incident, that, you know, the, the graven images and the high places were a problem for them from the time they were released from Egypt all the way through the you know, taking of the land all the way into the uh, United Kingdom under David and then Solomon. And then when we have it in Kings and Chronicles, the problems that they had in the land, both in Israel and in Judah, of having these high places and these graven images, which drew them away from from the worship of the true God. They provoked him with their high places, moved him to jealousy, with their graven images. You know, the Lord seems to be suffering a lot. He's tempted, provoked. They deal unfaithfully with him, like the fathers did. They provoked him to anger. So notice the word provoked is used twice in this passage, 56 and 58. They provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy. So provoked twice and jealousy. And then you go back and just look at how they provoked him in the wilderness there in 40. They grieved him. They turned back. They tempted him. They pained him. Yeah, the Lord suffered quite a bit with his people, didn't he? And what's the problem? Why are they doing this? God has delivered them, and because of his faithful compassion towards them, being full of compassion, it says there in verse 38, he brings them out, gives them a land, plants them in that land, gives them an inheritance, and yet they turn back. They turn back and they turn back to their idols. Why? Because they have a corrupt heart. They've not dealt with the root of their problem. Their heart is corrupt. And there's only one way to take care of that. And that is with the blood of Christ. For only the blood of Christ can cleanse you from all of your sin. From Adam's sin, your inherited corruption, and your actual sin, the things that you've done that you're ashamed of and you feel guilty over, God will redeem you from all of that by the blood of Christ. And otherwise, friend, you're just this is going to be a wheel and woe situation with you. You're going to turn to the Lord and then you're going to turn back. You're going to turn to him, you're going to turn back. It's never going to be enough. It's never going to be right. All the legalistic things that you do, all the to-do lists that you have, all the merit that you try to gain, it's never going to be enough because it's not enough. It can't be enough. Only what he's provided is enough. So turn to him. Turn to him. Call out to him. Tell him your problem. Tell him you're a sinner. And ask God to forgive you and to redeem you today. Tomorrow we're going to look at verses 59 through 64. And we're going to see God's judgment on the people. So we're going to remember some of his judgment now. So we're just going to call that Remembrance Part 3. Here on Daily Dose Radio. Thanks for listening to Daily Dose Radio. For more fresh and delicious Bible studies, podcasts, books, and more, check out The Bible Bistro online and on YouTube. Join me again next time for Daily Dose Radio.